All right, so let's discuss uh, back pain. You know, when a patient is coming to us uh, with back pain, there are lots of things we have to consider, we have to rule out as our differential. Because back pain can be anything. Back pain has got so many differential. Uh, for example, if you want to make it in a simpler way, make sure that we have got this mnemonic, KVT. Uh, C is cancer. You know, any cancer actually it can spread to the back any cancer spread to the back for example if you have got a male patient so we say prostate cancer even abdomen even uh, like uh, colon cancer for example that can spread to the back your pancreatic cancer so that's also very important uh, which other cancer we are talking about um, if you have got say kidney cancer if you have got bladder even you know if you have got breast female patient breast cancer uh, even if you have got thyroid thyroid cancer and of course multiple myeloma that's your blood cancer so multiple myeloma patient will be having pain in the back right so we have to see we have to ask the generalized sign symptoms of cancer because maybe this is a cancer of anywhere in the body which has metastasized now to the back so that's why patient is having back pain. So make sure uh, uh, if you have got generalized cancer symptoms, we are making sure which cancer it is, which is going or spreading to the back. So ask questions accordingly. For example, if you're thinking it might be a prostate cancer. So we can ask questions related to prostate, isn't it? We can ask about uh, if patient has got frequency, patient has got nocturia, patient has got hematuria, patient has got uh, uh, urgency, hesitancy, dribbling, incontinence, patient has got uh, poor stream, poor uh, emptying as well and general cancer symptoms like uh, weight loss, appetite loss, anemia symptoms like uh, dizziness, tiredness, palpitations and lumps and bumps anywhere in the body. So that's something we can ask for prostate meaning general cancer symptoms for everything, uh, any cancer plus prostate symptoms. For abdomen, colon cancer we can ask about uh, any abdominal problem isn't it uh, like uh, tummy pain is there like alternate bowel habits for example patient has got uh, diarrhea constipation diarrhea constipation so that is something very important patient has got tenesmus patient has got bleeding parietal so all these things will be pointing towards a uh, colon cancer of course with the uh, general cancer symptoms right even you can keep like uh, even gastric cancer also be there like a patient has got melina you know, so that might be going towards gastric cancer as well. Pancreatic, we can ask about itching if patient has got, patient has got uh, jaundice. Uh, so these are the things we can ask for uh, pancreas, right? Kidney, uh, kidney, we can have, uh, say, again, general cancer symptoms plus uh, uh, we might be feeling a lump in the loin so that might be going towards kidney patient might have a, a kind of hematuria as well bladder bladder we have got say hematuria which will be painless plus uh, uh, of course smoking and if patient is working in uh, in the factories like any lean dye factory so that will be going more towards bladder breast you can ask like if patient has noticed any lump in the breast so we'll be doing further investigations like uh, mammogram or ultrasound fnc or biopsy and we will see accordingly Right, thyroid, yes, we can ask the questions related to the thyroid. MM, yes, patient will be having all sign symptoms of uh, uh, hypercalcemia as well and, uh, and multiple myeloma. So patient will be having abdominal pain, patient will be having uh, uh, stones also, and uh, they usually have diarrhea. They can have, uh, like they feel like drinking too much of water and uh, they have got frequency in the urination as well. And maybe later on they might feel confused, drowsy as well. That is hypercalcemia sign symptoms. Right, so all the cancers actually, they can actually go to the back, they can spread to the back. So we have to be very careful. If you're thinking about autoimmune, so maybe uh, ankylosing spondylitis that we are thinking that might be the reason of uh, uh, the back pains, that's also considered as autoimmune. Uh, vascular, there are a few things we are thinking in vascular as well. For example, uh, maybe AAA, which is pretty common. Uh, aortic abdominal aneurysm. Abdominal aortic aneurysm, which is pretty common. Uh, AAA, uh, you will see patient is having pain in the back, right? Uh, so that's pretty important. And another thing that you can find is pulsatile mass. Pulsatile mass and abdomen. Right, so pulsatile mass and abdomen we can find and it will be spreading to the back. Patient will be having a severe back pain. Right, if you're thinking of any infection, so lots of infections are there, even UTI can present with back pain. If patient has got stone and it has uh, now become pyelonephritis, right? So pyelonephritis or stone, that infection plus UTI. Even you know if patient has got uh, say STI or PID, 
that can also give you back pain right uh, PID usually can give you right left iliac fossa pain like in females but uh, it can like give you some back pain as well for example patient has got trauma it is simple sprain for example so that might be the reason of back pain maybe patient was playing something and he played today maybe for the longer duration and he played maybe after a long time so that i can actually give you the sprain a very acute history will be having but uh, symptomatically we can treat it as well uh, if patient has got say uh, like patient was lifting heavy object and patient has got ivdp that is intervertebral disc prolapse that can also give you severe back pain which will be acute so ivdp patient is lifting heavy object maybe patient was working in a factory and uh, in the factory has to move heavy objects and when he was trying to move uh, uh, he started having this pain in the back so that might be going towards ivdp but when you are thinking about a disc prolapse make sure uh, you are ruling out quad equina as well uh, that will be pretty pretty important because if if ivdp is not something difficult to manage it's very easy to manage for, for us uh, symptomatically we have to treat patient has to take a bit of rest then patient can start walking a bit uh, nothing much difficult and we simply do th that x-ray and that's it and if patient pain is not getting relief we may be doing some further investigations as well but if it has become quad equina where patient will be having some urinary symptoms like retention or incontinence of urination plus patient has got constipation for example so these things will be pointing towards quad equina which is one of the complication of disc prolapse and it is an uh, neurosurgical emergency we need to treat the patient there and then we need to do mri and once we confirm it's quad equina then we need to go for uh, surgery we have to do surgical decompression otherwise it can lead to uh, permanent uh, neurological damage as well irreversible neurological damage so that's what we have to do so like trauma can be there sprain ivdp and quad equina and others like other things as well uh, for example say the weakening of the bone say osteo arthritis osteoporosis for example so these things can also give us uh, back pain i mean there are plenty of reasons plenty of uh, differentials we have got which can cause actually back pain even if you're sitting and you're not sitting in proper posture that will give you back pain if your height is like good uh, you're taller guy and it's not a good posture that can give you back pain isn't it so just improve your posture and your back pain will go so that's how we have to proceed with a station where uh, the question says uh, back pain so we will be considering we have to see lots of things we have to see uh, first of all age of the patient because if you're thinking about cancer patient age will be a bit more isn't it and if you're thinking about say uh, aortic uh, aneurysm uh, so we might be having a history of high blood pressure because uh, aortic aneurysm or any aneurysm what you have you usually have some history say high blood pressure autoimmune if you're thinking ask for other autoimmune diseases as well like diabetes like hypertension so that will be much much better infections so we will be asking about fever flu like symptoms if patient has got and for uti we have got other things also to ask like nausea vomiting change in the color or smell of urination and uh, all these things can be asked right if you think a trauma trauma you can ask what's the work of the patient and patient had got any trauma recently so this will be very acute history in case of trauma right and osteoarthritis osteoporosis so we just have to ask about other risk factor which can cause uh, osteoporosis like for example age of the patient for example female for example menopause for example uh, patient is not taking uh, dairy products in the diet for example uh, uh, a, a patient is taking steroid maybe for something maybe patient has got some medical conditions say giant cell arthritis or uh, a polymyalgia rheumatica for that we need to give steroid and it's for a longer duration so that's the reason patient has developed osteoporosis and that's the reason of back pain so meaning you have to take history accordingly we have to see uh, if it is chronic history if it is acute history and uh, how severe is the back pain and what's the working conditions like if patient has got any associated symptoms uh, of cancer or associated symptoms of any infections and this is how we can narrow down our differential and we can come up to our diagnosis right so these are the uh, differentials of uh, back pain the main differentials and uh, I hope like if you go in a sequence uh, in the presenting complaint past medical history personal social history examination investigation you'll never be missing uh, the proper diagnosis in case of uh, back pain right so that's the back pain thank you